Hey everybody and welcome to a review from the road. I'm at a hotel in South Portland, so that means I finally managed to get my hands on the Venom Pro from Dart Zone. And it's the first blaster in a while that as soon as I got this thing, I ripped it open. Sometimes I pick up blasters, I'm kind of excited, and they sit around in the box. I'm sure a lot of us that review have been guilty of that. And with this one, I didn't want to do that. I busted it open right away. I bought myself two. And I gotta say, other than one kind of initial nitpick off the bat, I actually really like this blaster. I'm pretty impressed with the performance. I'm really impressed with what you get in the box. For 50 US, which is about 72 Canadian, I think, you're getting this blaster, you're getting two mags, you're getting a charger, a battery, some pretty decent safety glasses. I'm actually gonna tip my hat to Dart Zone. It used to be a year or so ago when you got safety glasses, they weren't that great. There's a lot of distortion in the plastic lenses. I actually find these ones pretty good and they have pretty good side coverage as well. I think for glasses that come with a blaster, these are actually pretty impressive. Good job not just providing the cheapest source. The Venom Pro itself, the performance is pretty fun. Now I don't have a chronograph here with me. I try not to piggyback on the shoulders of others, but I do know from a bunch of different reviews, including Blaster Hub News, that this is a little over 130 FPS. I do know from the box, it does seven darts a second, which is a great firing rate. It means you can do a controlled one shot and still have the fun of full auto putting a bunch of darts down the field. with two mags is awesome. These mags are cross compatible with the Dart Zone, sorry, <laughs> cross compatible with the Worker Nightingale, one of my favorite blasters. The, woo, uh, these gravity drop is what I was going to say. We'll talk about that revving noise after. One thing I'm kind of excited about is I bought two of these for myself, which means I already have four of these mags. And I'm also kind of excited because my Nightingale mags when I don't use Worker Gen 3s, when I use Dart Zone darts, short darts, they're a little bit longer than Worker Gen 3s. And sometimes I have issues and I've read that these feed really well. So I'm actually kind of hoping that these will be better than my Nightingale mags in my Nightingale too. So we'll see, time will tell on that one. You have a very generous battery compartment behind this thumb screw up here. I really appreciate that it is a thumb screw. The battery compartment's really big. It's some sort of 2S battery, probably a lithium ion battery. I'll have to go back and check that, but I'm sure that it, I'm sure that it is. I thought for a second that this little S and F was single and full auto, but it's actually safety and full auto. So that makes sense. I mean, I kind of knew it wasn't select fire, but I had a moment of excitement there. That takes us to talking a little bit about the rev trigger, which is a little bit controversial to some, but you, you kind of squeeze the back of your palm against it to rev it, which is actually not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I actually kind of like it. Now, here's the only thing that I do have kind of a gripe with about this is I do find when I'm holding this in a way that is comfortable for me because of this brace down here, the finger guard, I'm holding it really, really low. That's where the back of my palm naturally wants to be. I kind of have to have my fingers going at a weird angle down here just to hold it in a way that I can rev it. And maybe they did that because of the back revving so that you could just be carrying it around lower like this and then kind of angle it back into your hand and palm when you're ready for business. That could be. I do find that's a little bit weird. I'm guessing that that is the method to the madness on that. If it didn't sit kind of unnaturally high in your hand, you'd accidentally be revving it all the time. I think it's interesting, good on them for trying something new. I didn't think when I saw this blaster that I liked the look of it. I really didn't. And now that I see it in person, I actually do like it. I like it 
a lot more than I thought I would. And I like the venting here for the flywheels. I thought it would be kind of big and bulging out more than it does. It does kind of bulge out on one side more than the other with the flywheels. But this is actually a pretty small blaster for the most part. I like that it has this little sliding sight up on the pick rail up here. It just is a pretty feature rich package for the money. Now, maybe as time goes on, I'm gonna admit sometimes I get so excited I'm a little too forgiving. As time goes on, maybe I'll get really annoyed with this kind of back rev trigger back here. And maybe I will make a move to add a proper rev trigger. I shouldn't say proper, but a traditional rev trigger. Or I know a lot of people are making these two stage triggers just like the Nightingale, which I do love that about the Nightingale. Put that into anyone's hands and they just know how to use it. So I'm guessing they didn't do that, maybe because we don't quite have quite as much pickup speed with that lithium ion battery as with a 3S LiPo, maybe. That's my guess. But for now, I think I'm gonna try to spend some real quality time with this blaster just the way it came. And having two of them, I think that'll be kind of fun to see how it feels to dual wield these. I know the holsters that I have from Joe, Foam Mando, I'm sure that these will fit just fine in those holsters. Just have to snug them up a little bit so I'll be able to carry these and I'm looking forward to the next event when I can have a chance. I'm a sucker for flywheel blasters so I was probably always bound to be more excited about this Nitro Shop blaster than the Striker 2.0 and I'm pretty pleased so far. The Nitro Shop darts, I don't have too much to say about those. I mean I've always liked bamboo darts. I've always found they work pretty well. Haven't done a lot of testing. Good to have a few more of these. As much as I love darts, because I am such a flywheel person, sometimes I don't get into that as much because this kind of bamboo dart or this dart that has less surface area touching a barrel of a sealed breech is kind of more advantageous to Springer blasters. Although, you know, just being light in itself is, you know, handy for throwing it a little bit further for a flywheel or two, I guess. I don't know. I'm at a hotel, so again, not the most detailed overview, but I wanted to get something out there. If I didn't mention it before, did I mention it before? It's been a long drive, guys. This is my 1,000th video. Try not to think of this as my 1,000th video. I am going to be doing something that's a little bit more special, diving into kind of a, what does a thousand videos look like? What does the analytics look like for that? What have I made from the channel? Just chatting about the channel in general. But I'm traveling and I didn't want to hold up not posting a bunch of videos just because I didn't have time to do a special video. So you're getting a few more in the meantime. This is technically video 1000, but you know what? Not a bad little blaster to be a special number because I do think this is pretty cool. I like that. Pretty easy to hit one dart off at a time. And a pretty satisfying full auto. If you see these on the shelf, I can't not recommend this for 50 bucks. You can get a battery. You can skip all that worry about LiPo or do I LiPo and am I, am I ready for LiPo? And just that alone, I end up using a lot of these lithium ion batteries that have been coming with the new Dart Zone blasters in some of my other stuff that I don't need super high FPS from. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Sorry for this review being from a hotel and uh, you'll probably be seeing more. Talk to you guys later. Bye -bye.